So the title of the, the next presentation is Root Cause Investigation of the Inadvertent Failure of Unit 2 Force Draft Fan Motor and the Corrective Actions Implemented by John K. Amu Uto. Okay. Uh, I have a brief bio for you before right. we start. Uh, John is a registered professor, professional electrical engineer in the United States and was born in Canada. Uh, West Africa uh, on July 30, 1969. He graduated from the University of Science and Technology in Kumasi, Ghana, with a Bachelor of Science degree in Electrical and Electronic Engineering in October, October 1992 and also an honorary second class of the division. He obtained his Master of Science degree in Electrical Engineering with emphasis in Electrical Power System from Oklahoma State University. Uh, in May 1998, and the second Master of Science degree in Engineering Management from University of Kansas in May 2006. He's currently working on his PhD in Electrical Engineering from University of Idaho with a project completion date of May 2012. His special field of interest included protective relay design and settings, auxiliary electrical system design and maintenance, transformer design and maintenance, fire protection system design and maintenance, flexible AC transmission system design and maintenance, large motor maintenance, exciter inspection and, test and testing, and power system transit. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chen, uh, for the introduction. Um, in addition to uh, that, um, I have my own consulting uh, business and um, my consulting area is basically into protection systems, and uh, that is uh, generator protection, transformer protection, and uh, model protection. And I also do a consulting for the reliability of our rotating machinery in terms of generator inspection and testing, and uh, model uh, inspection and testing that is uh, model sent to the model shop, and also transformer reliability. And uh, the title of my paper is a root cause investigation of the innovative failure of the uh, unit 2 force drum uh, and uh, the corrective actions uh, that were implemented. I'll go through the agenda of this presentation. First, I'll talk about the abstracts and uh, a brief introduction and uh, a little bit about um, XYZ power plant. Actually, it's a coal fire plant. And I also talk a, a little bit about um, the description of the event, uh, actually what happened. Then um, the nameplate data for the model, and uh, pictures are also showing uh, the damage to the winding and inspection of uh, the model, and uh, how the root cause uh, investigation was conducted, and uh, the solutions that were implemented, and uh, <coughs> that were proposed, and uh, how they were implemented. I also, you know, I have a lot of time for question time. With that, I'll start um, with the abstract. Uh, you know, um, the utility industry is uh, faced with a lot of competition. And uh, most utility companies are trying to stay on the competitive edge in that uh, uh, criticality of uh, their um, large models. Uh, it's very important to them. So basically, they've come up with a state-of-the-art uh, uh, condition monitoring system, be it a periodic or continuous uh, monitoring system. Uh, when, when this model failed, uh, uh, the name of it, I basically used ABC just to you know, hide the name of the company. Uh, the name of the company um, is uh, actually ABC Energy Generating. And now, uh, ABC Energy Generating decided that uh, thermal aging uh, based on extended condition assessment. Uh, was a good factor for them to consider um, as uh, the failure of uh, most of their critical uh, light models. The machine environment basically creates a lot of stresses and um, um, that can age uh, uh, the models uh, to uh, basically fail. And uh, the electrical and uh, the mechanical stresses can also cause uh, the failure of the model. And uh, for the electrical side, uh, basically, you know, the when uh, uh, expansion of the uh, model, basically, you know, the uh, copper basically causes a differential expansion of, uh, in, uh, between the insulation and the copper, and uh, that can cause a gradual degradation of uh, the insulation. When we did uh, the root cause uh, um, analysis, we found that, that the three most likely causes are thermal aging and uh, thermal deterioration. And, uh, 
The second cause was uh, the operator's uh, failure to heed uh, to the code and uh, hot static sequence. Mo as you know, models have uh, um, at, uh, basically the number of co uh, hot and uh, the number of code static sequence that you're supposed to uh, heed to. And also, um, there wasn't in, um, adequate PMs on that uh, the plant is supposed to have uh, based on uh, the cleaning of the filters and uh, uh, also um, the inadequate impregnation uh, that will uh, um, occur in the um, motor shop. Next, uh, the purpose of the investigation basically uh, is to basically find out what actually caused the motor uh, to fail. And uh, the function of the force draft fan, most of you that are in the power plant, uh, uh, the coal fire plant, basically a force draft fan basically helps uh, with the combustion uh, process of uh, um, the uh, boiler. And uh, as you know, the effect of the failure of the force draft fan can lead to a reduction of the megawatt capacity output of the unit 2. And, uh, that can also lead to uh, loss of revenue. When the uh, motor failed, the first thing that we did uh, was uh, basically conducted an interview. And the, the purpose of the interview is to basically gather the facts of uh, basically what actually happened. And uh, the facts were obtained, obtained from uh, the relay technician that was um, on uh, duty. And uh, like I indicated, the facts, uh, the the target of the class is to help with the, the root cause investigation and how to come up with a, a solution. Next, I'll talk about um, the nameplate data for the force draft fan. And uh, it's an AC induction motor. And uh, the voltage, uh, nominal voltage of operation is 4,000 volts. And uh, the total horsepower rating is uh, 1,500 horsepower. And uh, in terms of kilowatts, it's uh, 1,119. And the full load amps is 203 amps. Three-phase motor operational speed of 890 RPM, and uh, the power factor is 0.89, and it's a Formula one motor. <coughs> Next is a good picture of what actually happened. You see a section of uh, uh, both the winding and the stator core were completely gone. Next is uh, you know, um, a section of uh, um, the delaminated and failed um, uh, winding that shows uh, the individual um, uh, cores that makes them... Uh, uh, and uh, uh, overall part. Next is a, um, a picture of the section of the winding and insulation of the motor that has failed. And uh, next is a good picture. This is, uh, you know, when the, the motor, uh, uh, the old winding was uh, completely stripped and um, a new winding was uh, uh, put in, uh, was installed. When we did uh, the root cause uh, investigation, we found out that, you know, initially there were six uh, most probable causes uh, that came up. And uh, out of the six, we found out that the three most likely causes are thermal aging and thermal deterioration. And uh, the operator failure to hit to hot starts and timing sequence, uh, inadequate uh, VPI integration, and uh, inadequate PMs uh, that uh, the station uh, did not have. You know, uh, thermal deterioration and thermal aging can occur in both uh, random and form wound uh, uh, models. And uh, when uh, thermal deterioration occurs, basically, um, it leads to um, uh, basically degradation of uh, the insulation wall of the, um, of the conductor. Basically, you know, um, it starts delaminating, and uh, that is due to uh, the reason being that uh, uh, the thermal induced vibration basically. Um, and mix uh, the bonding that uh, occurs between for the insulation to break and oxygen attaches itself to it. So the, after the delamination um, has occurred, basically, you know, um, it uh, leads to a lot of uh, uh, hot spots uh, being created. Thermal aging can also occur due to overload compression. When you overload uh, the motor, basically, you know, it can lead to gradual degradation of uh, the insulation. Thermal deterioration can also occur due to poor design. If uh, you have a, a motor that has a, a blocked um, um, ducts, basically, you know, it's going to lead to inadequate cooling, and uh, inadequate um, uh, cooling can lead to degradation of, uh, um, of the motor. And also, poor manufacturing. And uh, if uh, you have, uh, you know, uh, the ground wall you know, insulation not really optimized uh, for electric stress and uh, uh, temperature-wise, uh, basically, it can lead to high temperatures, and these high temperatures can lead to uh, the failure of the insulation. And also, insufficient time between starts. You know, most uh, uh, motor, light models have, uh, you know, two cold and one hot starts. And uh, 
And uh, the timing in between these starts is very important uh, to be adhered to. And uh, if it is not adhered to, what happens is if you start a, mo um, a model and uh, you don't wait for the allowable time, what it is is it's, when you start a model, it's about, uh, it creates uh, five to six times uh, the normal uh, full load current. And that heat that is created, and you start it again, you don't allow the heat to depreciate. That heat basically adds to the already heat that is already there, and basically it leads to uh, degradation, gradual degradation of uh, the insulation. And the next is a uh, uh, negative sequence current, and that is uh, if you have an unbalanced condition. As you know, if you have a 3.5% unbalanced condition, it can lead to a 25% increase in uh, uh, temperature. Next is uh, dirty windings. Dirty windings can really, really cause uh, an increase in temperature. And uh, that is uh, based on you know, you, uh, not uh, having a good uh, uh, PM in place to clean the filters. And um, next is uh, loose bars and cause during the manufacturing uh, process. Uh, we didn't find, this is a part of uh, the causes that can create thermal aging, but that was a part of the reason that this model failed. And uh, the next is too many different things. We found out that that was the uh, part, of, part of it that basically caused uh, uh, this model to uh, basically also fail. Next is um, inadequate impregnation. Um, you know, um, if you don't have uh, inadequate uh, impregnation, you have a uh, uh, ground wall insulation uh, taping basically, you know, um, also, you know, fail. And uh, if you don't have a proper resin viscosity, what we found out was that the resin that was in the motor shop wasn't changed well. And uh, basically, you know, uh, they had an old resin uh, that was being reused, and uh, that basically, and uh, also the uh, impregnation pressure time wasn't um, adequate. Next is our operator's uh, failure to heat to cold, hot and cold timing sequence. I indicated that, you know, um, that also can cause uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, degradation of uh, the insulation. In that, uh, apart from uh, the heat that is already um, in place, you cause a lot of voltage surges. And if you ha already have uh, um, an insulation that is being degraded, well, what will happen was those voltage surges can cause a, a further um, a damage to the insulation. Next is uh, contamination. I've already made mention that uh, um, the station did not have a, a good uh, PM in place and, uh, uh, to change the filters and uh, basically um, uh, clean the, refurbish the model. So those contamination, added contamination, um, led to um, higher temperatures and uh, those higher temperatures uh, um, led to the failure of uh, uh, the model. And uh, the uh, model was also in an abrasive environment and those sand um, that way, in that environment, basically, it was settled uh, on uh, the insulation, and uh, that also uh, caused the failure of the model. The immediate solution that we did, we came up with, was basically to uh, remove the model and uh, send it to um, um, IEW, that is a, a model shop in uh, Illinois. And uh, for a long-term solution, what we did was, there's a periodic uh, PDMA, you know, um, and... Um, both uh, for offline testing and uh, online motor testing. This periodic PDMA testing is, is an acronym and is similar to the Baker testing. And uh, when we did uh, the offline testing and the online testing prior before the outage, we came up uh, with a lot of our signatures. Uh, basically, you know, those are uh, um, models uh, that basically uh, warranted uh, uh, further testing uh, to be done when, when uh, during an outage during the offline um, period. So uh, during the um, outage, uh, we did further testing, and uh, basically we were able to uh, identify a lot of uh, models uh, that were problematic. Next, uh, what we did was, uh, because this model that failed uh, didn't have RTD, if the, um, um, the RTD embedded in the windings, and most of the times, you know, you have uh, two RTDs per face, that would have actually indicated uh, give us uh, given um, the operators um, an indication that this model, uh, the temperature was uh, rising, but this model did not have uh, RTD. So what we did was, uh, any model that is going to be sent to the motor shop, uh, we basically advise uh, the motor shop uh, to install um, RTDs um, um, in the new windings that are going to be um, installed. Next is uh, uh, the protection system for all these models were all electromechanical relays.
And as you know, electromechanical relays uh, don't have uh, that capability of uh, having a multi-function capability in terms of uh, most of, most of these um, uh, modern relays, uh, they have the capability of monitoring the temperature of uh, the winding in addition to their protection uh, capability, overcurrent capability. So what we did was uh, we came up with a proposal to replace all the electromechanical relays with a 469 multi-function relay, and uh, this is, uh, those are the GE type. And uh, this uh, multi-function relay has the capability of uh, basically monitoring the temperature of the winding and can give an earlier indication of uh, the winding temperature increasing. And uh, the indication can be seen in uh, the control room. Next is, uh, we came up with a PM. And uh, because uh, the station did not have a PM uh, to basically um, clean um, these models and uh, clean the filters, so we came up with a, um, a, a PM uh, for them to basically clean uh, the models when the uh, models uh, come offline and, and uh, the rotor is uh, removed. Either the rotor is moving or the rotor is intact. And one thing that uh, we also found out was uh, the plant personnel, both electrician engineers, are not... Uh, when they send the models to the shop, they don't follow up. They just sit in the plant and basically communicate with the shop. So we came up with um, um, a proposal that uh, electricians and engineers are supposed to go to the model shop and provide a good oversight um, over the repair uh, of the model whilst the model is uh, in the model shop. Then one other thing too that we did was uh, we installed a power quality meters. Uh, in uh, the uh, switch here. Basically, the power quality meter is basically going to monitor both the voltages and the, and, and the current and can give an earlier indication of an issue with the model. Next is, uh, you know, uh, came, up with a, came up with another PM that basically leads to inspection of the state of windings and looking for traces of oil, dirt, and core damage and uh, the condition of the winding and inspection. And also visual inspection of the ventilation system. Um, both, uh, you know, uh, when the unit, um, uh, the models uh, come offline. Next is, uh, we came, also came up with another PM uh, for inspection of the wedges in the slot for tightness if, uh, um, when the rotor is uh, uh, removed and also inspection of the end winding support for tightness. One other thing too that we found out was the electricians, um, they, all that they know is the traditional mega testing of uh, uh, the model. But as to the interpretation of uh, the results that are obtained, they didn't know. All that they know is go and mega, bring the results, and uh, that's it. They put it in the file. So what we did was uh, we trained uh, the electrician on how to interpret this uh, uh, mega testing. And though we have a periodic uh, PDMA testing that basically will be able to test, mega test uh, uh, the model, they also were using the traditional uh, mega testing. So we did train the electrician on uh, the success criteria of uh, this uh, uh, insulation uh, resistance testing. Next uh, is uh, uh, implementation of uh, the first uh, solution. And uh, we solicited um, a contract from IEW and uh, basically for uh, the performance of PDMA online and offline. And uh, online is a uh, pre outage. They gather all the signatures, find out the models that are going to be problematic. And uh, uh, during uh, offline, during outage, uh, uh, the offline testing is done. The next uh, uh, solution I've already talked about is uh, basically installation of RTDs uh, uh, in, um, uh, during uh, when the model is completely you know, rewound. Next is uh, uh, um, installation of uh, the uh, multi-function relay, and uh, it's, it was uh, 10 of them uh, we installed um, in uh, the switch here. And uh, basically, you know, it's that uh, multi-function capability uh, gave um, a good indication of uh, any temperature escalation. And uh, basically, the RTD can be wired to the uh, DCS in the control room, and uh, that the operators will always see that you know there's something wrong with the uh, model, and uh, basically provide uh, an earlier. Um, uh, Troubleshoot action. Next is, uh, you know, um, I did make mention that you know a predictive uh, PM was created for them to for the craft to basically clean the winding, change the filters, and uh, basically you know clean the environment and the ventilation systems. 
I did also mention uh, how this was implemented out uh, there, having a craft personnel and an engineer go to the, um, the uh, shop that the model is being repaired or being rewound and make sure that they provide a good oversight over uh, the winding um, process, the impregnation process, and uh, making sure that uh, all the, the testing that is done meets our uh, expectation of uh, the specification. Next is uh, a power quality meters. Uh, that was also in, um, installed. And um, the ninth and the tenth solution is uh, basically also ha had a PM that uh, will allow the tightness of the wedges and uh, tightness of the end winding if uh, the model is being repaired on site. If it is being repaired uh, in the motor shop, uh, basically uh, the crafts go to the motor shop and provide oversight to make sure that uh, the uh, motor shop uh, is doing uh, what they are supposed to do. And uh, the eleventh solution is uh, basically in-house training for the uh, electricians. And uh, with that, that brings uh, to the end of my presentation. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. Yes, uh, Howard Penrose. Uh, do you uh, do you have a repair specification? to yeah. give the expectations to the repair shop? Yeah, uh, we had a repair specification, but as to it being, actually this actually happened yeah. um, about, uh, I would say about six years ago, and that was, I was working for a coal fire plant. Um, as to the quality of uh, the um, specification, I would say it was below standard at that time, but that was a generic uh, specification that was written by somebody at that time and was given to the motor shop. Yeah, so based on that, uh, um, revisions were made to match to a pre standard. Okay. Ian Coleman, I have a question. Uh, this is a, a FD fine, so it's a very high inertia drive. Okay. That's good. The, the German equipment is an FD fine. Yes. Which has very high inertia. Yes. So during every start, you get a lot of heating. Yes. Both the state and the motor line. So mm -hmm. How much do you think that contributed to the... To yes, the, actually, that, that was a, a big contributor, you know, yeah, again, right, because right, uh, yeah. in that, uh, when we checked the operator log and looked at the number of uh, starts between hot and cold, yeah. they did not follow uh, that... No, uh, and, the, and the time between... And the time in sequence, you know, so basically, that actually, you know, I will say there was a thermal aging process that was already in pre it's process, and it. that basically, uh, you know, accelerated, you know, the yeah. phase. And, yeah. and the rotor winding too. You want yes, to exactly. When you do frequent starts, you can throw yeah. the rotor bars. Exactly. Okay. At the uh, failure point, what we sometimes see is that failure occurs multiple times in the same spot, especially when you have that much damage. Mm -hmm. um, do they? Do, do you have a? you require a core loss test and hot spot test? And then if there is damage like that where you're missing a lot of material, do you have them restack or replace core material? Uh, what we did was uh, um, uh, we, we did um, have them replace the, the whole um, se section of the core material. Okay. And uh, basically what they did, uh, you know, core loss testing after that. What kind of wedges were used in this motor? Retroferrite wedges? Could, could you repeat it? The, the, the material of the wedges, the make of the wedges. Was it uh, It was um, or uh, G11? No, that time G11 wasn't prop, you know, hasn't, it, was a, it was a material before the G11 material. Yeah, so after the failure, we made them use a G11. Because this was an old model that has been in an operation for more than 40 years. <laughs> yeah, so that time G11, you know, hadn't come into, you know, existence. But after the failure, and after the, um, before the rewind, we made them use a G11. Any other questions? Mark, I have a quick question. You had said uh, one of the possible root causes was too many dips and bangs. Can you explain why that would be the case? Actually, correct question to that. It was uh, basically they did not follow uh, the VPI process well. What it is is inadequate impregnation. Oh. And uh, the resin, 
um, basically, you know, the chemistry of that resin was poor. So that actually caused a lot of voids in uh, the impregnation, you know, process. So that was actually not uh, deep, too many deep and bakes. Oh. Yeah. Because too many deep and bakes basically rather will, you know, seal the, all the voids and uh, bakes and uh, rather create a much better uh, heat uh, transfer. Though it's not proper though. Too many. Time for one more question. And the takeaway from this is uh, always, always provide oversight when your models go to the model shop. Don't assume. You see, OEMs, they make mistakes. They are humans. So don't uh, rely on them for them to give you, you know, a good product. Go there, provide <laughs> <laughs> oversight. Make sure they are doing what is expected. <laughs> yeah, because oh yeah, they make mistakes all the time. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been to a lot of uh, motor shops. I've been to a lot of manufacturing shops. They make mistakes. But your presence there, checking on them, make sure that they follow your specs and they don't deviate from it. And even when you are there, when they, they make a mistake, you are going to be honest and tell you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.